Visual 2D transient. Okay, this is a fun code. I don't know if I'm supposed to do it next, but I'm gonna. Yeah, it's next. Sweet. I wrote this, I really like it. So we have our, our boundary conditions. So we would know all of this information. At the beginning, we would, we would know the boundary condition and we would know the temperature distribution inside of the entire domain, right? So then we would walk through time and we would set, we would know the boundary condition didn't change because that's what happens. So if you think about this, now we're taking, we're taking this is the, the initial conditions is this bottom square. The second set of, the second time step is the middle row. So then we're gonna, we're gonna calculate all of the values inside of the, the middle row as we go along. And so now we, we know everything on the middle row and we'll take, we'll walk up another time step and go to the top and calculate everything inside that domain. I don't remember how many times I said I was going to do this, but we just keep walking up. Does that make sense? We're just discretizing the function and walking through. I think Ali didn't like it when I showed it to him, but I really like it. So. Once again, clear all, close all, and CLC, and set the number of of nodes, the size of the of the markers, and the number of times it's going to iterate. You notice how these equations, these codes are very similar. So once you understand the basics of heat transfer, all of the codes that solve them in this fashion are very the same. If you can understand nested loops up to three nested loops, you can do most of the heat transfer that's in any class that you're going to take. More complicated stuff obviously gets more complicated. But to get started with, they all look about the same. So this code, it is almost exactly the same as the other one, except I use the plot3 command instead of plot. So it plots a three dimension. You give it three values and it'll put a plot. Uh, it'll put whatever you give it there. Basically this is the two, two bottom dimensions and then the height is the third one. Right? Oh, side note, if I run this, before I forget. I don't particularly want to go through all this again. If you can hit this this button here and you can move around and look at your look at your plot and see what's going on. So that's a handy feature. And then if you hit this button I may have done that a little fast, but this button here, then you can adjust adjust everything you want to use. So adjust the background or whatever. You can change it in here. And I was going to show this later, but while I'm here, you can go to File and Generate M File. If you click this button, it'll go ahead and um, I hope this doesn't take forever, but it'll it'll write you a, an M file that'll it'll set the background to red, all these data points into their proper place, turn the grid on. Apparently, this is too complicated for this computer. So once again, we're this. We have two loops on the inside that are that are walking through the spatial dim dimension, right? We talked about that, and then a while loop on the outside that'll let us walk through the time domain as many times as we want. 